everybody to St. Nicholas Parish. Um, thank you for coming to this exhibit. We appreciate your visiting with us today and um, taking the time to share uh, this exhibit with us. Um, our speaker today is Bishop John Kudrick. He's the Bishop of our Byzantine Catholic Eparchy of Parma, Ohio. So I will turn the microphone over to Bishop John and he'll give us a few words about Bishop Sheen. Thank Father Muron and the parishioners of St. Nicholas Church for inviting me uh, and for uh, welcoming the exhibit here. This exhibit had been in our uh, cultural center in Parma originally and uh, we, soon after I became Bishop of Parma, the Eparchy of Parma is the same thing as Diocese of Parma, but uh, we have a different word coming from the Greek rather than the Latin, but that's the same thing, you know. So at any rate, we are, this is a parish of that diocese, sort of, so I'm their bishop. And uh, we have many parishes in this region, so we developed a cultural center for us. And uh, the first exhibit actually was uh, wooden churches from the region where the founders of our churches came. And uh, the second was this exhibit on Archbishop Sheen. Now, soon after I became Bishop of Parma, a uh, parishioner of one of our churches, St. Nicholas Church in Munster, Indiana, came to me and asked me uh, if I would be on the board of the Archbishop Sheen uh, Foundation. And I said, well, uh, I'm not sure, you know, that I, I'm kind of worthy to be on such a board. He said, no, 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 he said, you really wanted me. So he and another man actually developed or founded this foundation. And this man named Gregory Ladd uh, asked me to be on it. So I said, sure. So I became, and I found out that they went originally to the Archdiocese of New York and uh, they had great devotion to Archbishop Sheen, having seen him on TV, and again, coming from Indiana and from the Midwest, they, they felt connected with him because Archbishop Sheen uh, was born in Illinois and uh, grew up there and was a priest of the Diocese of Peoria originally, but moved to New York and uh, so they went to the Archbishop of New York and they said, would you help us and sponsor the canonization process for this great man? Well, the Archdiocese of New York had two others that they had agreed to sponsor. Uh, Pierre Toussaint, who had been a, uh, a, lay, a, a brother, I believe, um, I shouldn't say so absolutely, but certainly not a priest, in, uh, and was buried in St. Patrick's and also Cardinal Cook, who was also buried in St. Patrick's, and Archbishop Sheen is buried in St. Patrick's uh, Cathedral. And they said, you know, we already have two, and Archbishop Sheen lived here, but and he was a, a, an auxiliary bishop of New York, but in truth, uh, we didn't he, uh, yeah, he, he, he kind of had uh, loggerheads with Cardinal Spellman <laughs> when he was the auxiliary bishop, and they thought it would probably be better. So, so the, the Diocese of Peoria took on the sponsorship. So, uh, and it's caused little uh, difficulties over the years, but. The Diocese of Peoria has done a marvelous job, especially under Bishop Jenke now. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I went on the board and I went to a number of the meetings and uh, it was a, a little bit expensive. And I said, you know, I, I don't know if I can afford to be traveling on these things. And, and they wanted me to go around the country speaking on Archbishop Sheen and, and again at my expense, or the Eparchy's expense. So I thought, well, maybe, uh, Maybe I better back off. So I, I, I resigned from the board. Uh, but the reason that this uh, Gregory Ladd came to me and asked me to be on the board 
was that Archbishop Shane, as Bishop Shane, was the one who had the first pontifical or uh, bishop's liturgy in English. And uh, you see the video out here of him having that liturgy in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, which is not far from here, really. Uh, but uh, at our annual pilgrimage, and at that annual pilgrimage, there was over 100,000 people who came. He was so well known and so well respected that they came for that liturgy. And uh, the liturgy was uh, kind of a combination of English and Slavonic at the time. This was in 1955. Now, some of us who had the good sense to be born before that knew, <laughs> <laughs> knew that English was really quite a novelty. The Latin church had Latin only, and the, our church had Slavonic only. And uh, so, 1955. Now, anybody remember when Latin came into the Latin, or English came into the Latin liturgy? <laughs> Some of you remember that too. Which was, anybody know a date? 69. 14 years after this. Now, this was not universally accepted when it came in 1955, and it took till 64 when our bishop had an English liturgy at the Vatican II. I think it was 64, maybe 63. But uh, I think it's 64. So, anyway, uh, so in a way, we were kind of the pioneers in bringing English into the liturgy or vernacular into the liturgy for that matter. And it was Archbishop Sheen who gave us that courage. And because of that, a lot of it followed suit. Now many people are saying we should never have left the Latin. And, uh, and many of us have said, you know, we should never have left the Slavonic. And unfortunately, as somebody said earlier to me, you know, that threw the baby out with the bathwater, you know, uh, that maybe we did. But all that being said, Archbishop Sheen has a very important role in the church today, especially well, no, in the church today across the world. Um, the, uh, the cause for canonization of this man kind of grows from the need for a... Uh, a modern saint, and especially a modern American saint. When we think of the saints, we think of those who, you know, were around in the 300s or the 1500s, St. Francis and St. Uh, John Chrysostom from 300 AD and, and so back. And, and so often we think that it was easy to be holy back then. <laughs> you know, whereas today it, it's almost impossible. And so we need to raise these people and say, no, you can be holy even today. Now, again, those of us who were around in the 50s consider the 50s yesterday. <laughs> Some of the others, you know, that was way back when all already, you know. And so they're looking for saints today. And so, uh, I remember a story that uh, somebody came and they said, you know, Fulton J. Sheen, you know, where'd you get the name Fulton? You know, there is no Saint Fulton. And they said, well, not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it turns out that, that it was his mother's maiden name and he had been uh, a sickly child apparently and was raised by his grandparents, his mother's parents. And when he would be walking down the street, they'd say, oh, there's that Fulton boy. <laughs> and, uh, and he kind of grew to like it. And so he, he, was, he was baptized to Peter. Peter James, I think, yeah. And uh, so anyway, he can be, I believe, for us, a real model for us, especially in today's culture and society, that... Uh, the 50s were uh, 
very different culture than, they, than it is today. You know? And even then, you know, he reached out well beyond the Catholic culture. You know, many of us were raised in a community where everybody was, uh, I mean, I came from a very small coal mining village. And uh, people asked me, well, did you have a Catholic school? You need a Catholic school. <laughs> the public school was Christian. It was not necessarily Catholic, but the public school was Christian. You know? And the teachers would remind us that don't forget tomorrow's a holy day. Or tomorrow night there's a, a service at the Protestant church. You know? Well, you wouldn't do that today. Uh, but at that time, the culture was, was very supportive of our faith. But even so, this preacher got on the TV and became such a popular preacher preaching the very basics of the catechism. Very basics. You can go through his, his uh, teachings and, and, and try to find something that would, would identify him or distinguish him from other preachers. And except for his way of preaching, you can't really find anything. You know, St. Francis, you would say, okay, the poverty, or the, the connection with creation, or St. Dominic, the, the, the insistence on preaching, or uh, Mother Teresa, the care of the poor.